Okay, this video is on histograms and percentile rank. Now, a histogram is just a way of displaying a distribution that uses columns to show how the data points are distributed. Now, we've already looked at a couple of different ways of uh, looking at distributions. A histogram is very similar to one of those ways that we've already talked about, a dot plot. And now, if you think about a dot plot, say that we had uh, a bunch of people and we measured their heights and we wanted to create a dot plot of their heights, then our dot plot would probably look something like this. We just put a dot for each person in our data set. And the number of dots just represents how many people are at that particular height. So like maybe this would be I don't know, maybe this is 66 inches, and maybe this is 67 inches. That may be our middle point here, 68 inches. And the number of dots would just represent how many people are that tall. Well, histograms, it turns out, are very useful if you have a very large data set. So this dot plot of people's heights might be OK if we just had, say, maybe, I don't know, 30 or 40 people. But let's say we had several thousand people that we measured their heights and we wanted to have a graph of what their heights look like. Well, then we might want to use a histogram. And a histogram of this same data set, if we just had a whole bunch more people, a histogram might look something like this. You can see it has these columns instead of dots. All right, so basically, instead of showing every single data point in the data set, we're going to use these columns to show just the number of data points in a particular range. So like for example, our range might be, let's say we showed uh, people who had heights from, let's say this was 66 to 68. Those were the people in this, in this column right here that's called a bin. From 68 to 70, that would be this bin from 70 to 72. And that would be our histogram. So these columns of a histogram that I just mentioned are called bins. And the bins, these columns here, they always have the same width. So in this particular histogram, the width of our histogram would be 2 inches. Now the height of the bins, the height of these columns, indicates how many data points fall within a given interval. So let's say we had in, our, uh, in our, our, our set of data points the number of people whose height we measured. Say that we had a total of, um, I don't know, say we had a total of 8,600 people whose height was between 68 and 70. Well, the height of this particular bin, 8,600, that represents how many people there are, how many data points are in that bin, or how many people's heights were between 68 and 70. So that's how many data points we have that fall within that given interval, 68 to 70. Now, one thing to note about histograms is that a histogram is not a bar graph. The bars of a bar graph indicate how many data points are in a particular category. And this is very different from a histogram. For example, let's say we had a, uh, say we took a bunch of people and we wanted to count uh, the, the color of their eyes. So say that we had some number of people had blue eyes, and some number of people had brown eyes, and maybe some number of people had gray eyes. All right. Well, similar to a histogram, the height of the bars would again indicate how many people had, for example, blue eyes, brown eyes, or gray eyes. But notice that blue, brown, and gray, they don't represent particular intervals. And in fact, since they just represent categories, we could just as easily have drawn this bar graph 
we could just as easily have drawn this bar graph. We could have put the people with brown eyes first and the people with blue eyes next. And the people with gray eyes last. So we could have, in other words, we could have moved our categories around in any order that we want. Well, in a histogram, you can't do that because like in the histogram that we looked at before, the height, the histogram of different people's heights, the heights, they fall along this range of values. And the range of values starts at the lowest value and it goes all the way up to the highest value. So you can't rearrange those columns. Those columns are going to fall wherever they happen to fall in that interval of values. So even though the bar graphs look similar to a histogram, they're very different because they measure different types of data sets. Okay, percentile rank is a uh, topic that you talk about that is often related to histograms. And percentile rank just means the percentage of data points that lie below a given value. That is the percentage of data points in a data set that lie below a given value. And this is kind of the critical part. It's the percentage of data points that lie below a given value. For example, SAT math scores. In a particular year, the uh, SAT math scores, if you scored if you got a score of 700 on the SAT math portion, which is a pretty good score, the maximum score is 800 on the SAT math test. If you got a score of 700, your percentile rank would have been 93. That means that if you scored a 700 on that year's SAT math test, you would have scored better than 93% of all the other test takers. That's pretty good. If, however, you had gotten a score of 500 on the SAT math test in that year, your percentile rank would have been 46, which indicates that you scored higher than only 46% of all of the other test takers. So clearly a score of 700 would be better, and that's indicated by the fact that your percentile rank is higher. You scored higher than 93% of all the test takers if you got a score of 700, but you only scored higher than 46% if you got a score of 500. The percentile rank is the percentage of data points that lie below a given value. And we're going to talk about this some more in class tomorrow.